How are you? I'm doing great. How are you? Good. Do you guys, uh, do you guys like the episode? I hope so, because there's a bunch of people here that are going to get really sad if you didn't. So, um, uh, I just want to start off, uh, get questions prepared, because I'm going to totally lean on you guys. But uh, 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 after this, but I just want to start off by saying uh, it seems like season two, you have uh, there's a lot of uh, men on missions and women on missions, and like everybody. Uh, it has, it seems to have a very strong forward progression here, and and uh, uh, I was wondering if the actors could talk about um, the the very strong character work that we've seen already in the first episode here, uh, and the unknown path that lays before them, and then if the creative team could talk a little bit about making sure everybody gets uh, something to do and is a strong character. Um. Um, forgive me, I, I literally forgot the majority of the scenes that we shot in the first season. I'm serious, because we, uh, and it, it goes to your question, because um, we start in such different places than we originally uh, played with the most in the first season, and the arcs of all the characters is pretty extreme and very big, and we all go through uh, some pretty insane changes and mix-ups uh, through the, the course of the ten episodes in the second season. Um, so we forget sometimes, you know, because we go so many different places. Um, but for myself, um, what I, I loved about the way we started the second season, uh, and, and as it continues, is we take, you know, this iconic character, Seth Gecko, the, the mouthpiece of the Gecko brothers, who always is the showman, acts like he has it together, and we, we rip him apart from his primary codependent relationship he has with, with Richie. You know, he's, he's never operated in, in any other way, just the two of them as a duo. And we, we rip him apart in a pretty strong way at the end of the, the first season. So what happens when that guy is at his absolute worst, you know, under, under the rock? He's just completely destitute, down and out. Uh, at his lowest, abs absolute lowest point. So that was really fun to explore. And uh, as the season goes on, we we rebuild parts of him, and we watch him kind of, you know, his arc starts at the lowest, then he goes to all these other crazy places. So it was very satisfying to play uh, different sides of this guy. It sounds like uh, Richie's handling the separation better. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, he he yeah he found an age appropriate <laughs> girl to hang out with, and you know, I'm. Uh, I found heroin, so. <laughs> there you go. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I'll speak about Richie, thank you. Um, yeah, I think the main difference for my character this season is we're kind of seeing him, like you said, we're all on missions, but for this time, I'm on a mission without my brother. So the history of my character is we've always worked together as a duo, and obviously at the end of season one, we split, so now I'm in this new partnership with Santanico. And I'm trying to see if, how that's gonna be different for me. Um, Richie was always kind of the number two guy to Seth in our history. And now that I'm working with Santanico, I think he thinks that maybe he can kind of call the shots and he can kind of be the guy who's driving stuff, but maybe Like real we'll, life, maybe oh, we'll find, always women call the shots. <laughs> so maybe we'll find he's, you know, falling back into the same place he was before. Um, but it's cool, you know, aside from trying to plan these jobs and, and this mission that we have um, to, to pull jobs against uh, Malvado. He's in a relationship and he's trying to see what it's like to have his, his first girlfriend. And I think all that stuff is fun for me to play and, and hopefully cool for the audience to see play out. Um, I think for Santanico, you got uh, in the first season just a little glimpse of what she was. You know, you got to see this um, woman who comes out and you really, don't understand what is sh her role in this history. And I think in this whole story, and I think in the second season, you really get to see not just in my character itself, but in every other character, a th more three-dimensional story in every th single one of them. You know, you get to see the more human side of every character. You get to see more of a, you know, the, the first season is all played out in a day, and this season is more of like a lot of things going on and so the characters become very three-dimensional people they become real people but then you get to see that there's bad and worse and even worse and you get to see the really dark side of of the humans and self and so I think that for Santanico you get to see uh, what is her goal where is she going and how is she preparing herself and how is, in a way she she partners up with Richie and she's kind of becoming 
um, she's creating her army and she's planning to destroy something that is destroyed. You, you get to see in the first episode how the backstory of how she's been, and you'll get to see throughout the whole season how she's been ripped to pieces by this Malvado character and how she's been destroyed and then you, you get to see all this side of vengeance from her and, and it's really beautiful for me how this second season it all plays out together. You know, you get to see how every single character that everyone will tell you just get to like inner have like a relationship and for me like the key part of the season is that we all become chess pieces. You know, you know if you move one everything moves. It's just a play and, and it's like I feel the feel of the season is like you never can leave your you always have to be looking back because you know you don't know who's going to betray you so it's really interesting this whole season <clears throat> and uh you know for for uh my character uh first of all thank you everybody for being here today really yeah. really cool you guys should appreciate it we're so um, rude yeah no 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 it's um you know there's a lot of there's a lot of uh, excitement going on on this show you know that we you know each character um you know, what I think what, what Quentin and, and, and Robert established was some of the most intriguing characters of cinema. You know, and you really wanted to see where these characters were eventually go. You know, what happened after that movie? What, after, what happened after the Titty Twister incident? And um, <clears throat> in this second season, we really get to breathe. We really get to walk with these characters and understand uh, eventually what path would, would they be uh, taking after the movie. And I think that's, that's going to be really unpredictable and really excited <clears throat> and, uh, and really twisted. And um, for my character, uh, Carlos Madrigal, you know, last season I think you understood that you know for 500 years they've been, uh, you know, by by Santanico's side, they've been building towards a a, a prophecy, uh, walking among the you know among the living. And uh, and um, and what I thought was really interesting is that 500 years later, the big showdown happens. There was a there was a betrayal. Um, I get betrayed by <clears throat> the woman that I believed I loved, um, and um, I get sent to the to the labyrinth to get reeducated. Um, I'm believed to not make it out, and something inside that labyrinth drove me to find that inner strength um, or that rage that somehow allowed me to um, to make it out. And um, you will see, you know, you will see as this character comes out earn his, uh, his spot again uh, within the underworld and most importantly um, executes what, uh, you know, what his real goal is. <clears throat> now he's really driven by something else. Before it could have been love, uh, it could have been, could have been the, uh, um, you know, Ooh, the actual achieving of the, of the prophecy. <laughs> but um, but uh, now uh, he comes out with a very different outlook on things. He's very, very angry. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Um, Kate is a, t is a changed woman this season. I mean, she started off in season one as a bratty teenage girl who just didn't want to go to freaking Mexico <laughs> in an RV with her dad and her dad. And, um, you know, and when shit hits the fan, it, it really changes her. And, and, and for me especially, this season starts out with a choice, you know? You have me, Kate, and Seth, and they're both in the same situation. They've both lost everything. They've lost everyone they love. They've lost the path that they thought that they were on. And now you have two people that are just lost, and, and you see this decision happen between the two of them, and Kate is like, she's not gonna let this eat her alive. She's gonna go find her brother. She's gonna be a family. And then you've got Seth, who's like, turn to drugs. And uh, obviously I'm an enabler. <laughs> <laughs> Enablers Anonymous. <laughs> and um, I, I guess you'll get to see throughout this season that it, this is really Kate's journey towards redemption. Yeah, that's a good, thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Love I told her to say that. And um, yeah, redemption. And she was so angry at the end of last season. I think she really hated her brother. And as you can see, I must have had some kind of change because I, I think I realized somewhere that he's my only family and family is all you need. Yeah. Oh, Hannah means family. <laughs> Excellent reference. Thank you. Yeah. Um, hey, guys. 
Uh, so on a blog I read, I'm not sure who said this, but um, they said that if the first season was daytime, the second season would be nighttime because it just takes a really, really dark turn. And I think especially for uh, my character, it's really true. And uh, definitely for Scott, um, he goes through some pretty dramatic changes. He starts off just as a rebellious young teenager with like angst. And then um, he's traveling into this like really, really crazy criminal world. And what you'll see in season two is um, he, he's in some pretty bad shape. <laughs> yeah, as you see him on the chain. And um, I was going to say, I don't want any spoilers, but, but uh, please tell me that you recreate the Pulp Fiction, bring out the gimp scene for the rescue. Is that, that, that's where you guys are going. I don't, I don't want to. Yeah? I, I, no, no I'm spoilers. Sorry. I didn't no spoilers. mean to spoil it for you guys. <laughs> but um, yeah, um, after all the stuff that he goes through, he's just going to, he's going to take all of that. And at the end of his journey, he's going to try to find himself. I think he's just a really lost, lost guy and he really wants... He wants power and he wants acceptance and he's looking for it in like all the wrong places as uh, we might see later on. But um, yeah, I think he just wants to, find, wants to find his place in the world. And he goes to this gentleman right here to find it and um, he takes into some crazy places. So yeah, that's coming up in season two. I still can't believe I'm here. <laughs> I mean, I'm working with the dream team right now. I'm working with my cast and, and Robert and, and Diego and, and Carlos. It's, um, I can't believe it, man. These guys are just fucking badasses and, and I, get, I get to be a part of it. And I get to learn from these guys and, and, and the journey that we're all taking, we're all taking it together. Um, and we all feed off of each other, no pun intended. Uh, <laughs> little bit of pun, little bit of pun. Um, and, and, I, and, I'm, and I'm so stoked to be here. Uh, as far as my character, um, I think from the first season to this season, you, you, you'll get to see him, how he, you know, his, uh, his relationship with his family and, and, um, and it, basically, it really is his relationship with, you know, the battles and inner demons with himself and, and discovering who, you know, who he is through this bloodline that he'd not, he didn't know existed in this whole world he didn't know existed. Um, and there's some there's some crazy shit that's happening, and it's this you you guys are gonna freak the fuck out when you see what his we're doing. Become, his character becomes a super badass too. Just wait. <laughs> yeah, it's gonna be fun. Well, hello everybody. I'm um, I'm the token blonde guy <laughs> on the show. Got to have one of those. Uh, yeah, you know, it's, it's kind of wild uh, taking on a role called Sex Machine. Um, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's a trip. It's, it's been a wonderful ride with these guys, and season one was, was, uh, was a lot of fun. And, um, you know, I, uh, I, I kind of felt like the character that I played is Professor Tanner, who reveals himself to be Sex Machine later on down the road. You know, he's, um, I kind of feel like he's like sort of the Greek chorus of the show. He's, he's, he's a bit of an outsider and he's not, he's not involved. He's not, he's not a family member. He doesn't have bloodlines. He doesn't have, you know, he's not a gecko. He's not, he, he, he's got blonde hair. So he's, you know, he's a, he's a professor and um, he spent his life sort of as an outsider really yearning for information and knowledge and discovery of all this that's what's going on. And so he has, I think, a little bit more of the knowledge about all this stuff in a, in a textbook way. Um, and so he's not necessarily going through it on a first-hand level as much. Um, so, you know, I, you notice I, I wasn't in this one, but uh, in, in, in the next one... We make up for one, that next week. In, you know, yeah, we'll <laughs> presents remedy felt, that in a week. There, there so, was sex machine all over that. It was so the, we try and get sex machine all over everything. <laughs> no, so, you know, the season two will be fun. And again, you know, uh, being a little bit of a Basil exposition and, and uh, <laughs> kind of, uh, I don't know, I guess sort of like a, a bridge between the audience and the main guys, but uh, it's, I tell you, it's a heck of a ride, and, and I'm, as, as Jesse said, I'm uh, blessed to be here with these guys. It's a hell of a group, hell of a group. This, uh, yeah. this all sounds really cool, but 
We were just trying to get as many movie references in the scripts as possible, so I don't know what any of these people are talking about. Uh, yeah, I could tell when you had a, <laughs> had a uh, monologue all about Burt Lancaster. Yeah. I was like, you're, you're yeah. speaking to me. Well, I don't, I don't you know, know about, about the rest of the TV audience, but I'm like, yeah. I mean, for Hell us, yeah, look, for us, I mean, I, look, I consider myself a caretaker of, of Robert and Quentin's characters. And so, you know, when this opportunity was, was given to me, you know, it was sort of like, how do we honor these characters? And they're so rich and there's so much great stuff going on. And so season two, I mean, in rhythmically, if you, you know, they, they've covered a lot of the stuff, but season two rhythmically is uh, similar to season one in the sense that they were all disparate people from disparate backgrounds who had sort of come together and got pulled together by the events of, of, of the day, you know? And there's a very sort of similar type timeline in season two, and they've all been sort of sent different ways at the end of the first season, so now forces are sort of pulling them back and they're all kind of, you know, headed toward one goal. And uh, it, 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 you know, it's, it builds slowly but surely, but it's really about expanding uh, the universe and also really digging deep on these characters who, you know, for me are just, you know, so rich and so, you know, just compelling. Robert, say something to nice people, because I'm told you have to go, so. Well, I'm excited about season finale I start shooting next week. You know, I, I told these guys, um, make sure we end with a bang, and, and uh, we've saved a lot of money over the season, so let's add some days and add some stunts. The stunt department's budget quadrupled. They're really happy. So um, in the next two weeks, we're going to be shooting the finale of the season, which is already fantastic season but i can't wait we're gonna cause a lot of mayhem well uh, it's really well, speak, awesome speaking of the fantastic season i heard you have a little something to show yeah you know it's hard when you just see the one episode because it kind of connects really directly to the second one but it's a serialized so you get sucked along and, and it just keeps building and building and we've we're only really shot up to you know episode um well we've only really cut up to episode six but uh, would like to see a little tease of some of the season two goodness and uh, the regulator played by Danny Trejo and all that. Check it out. Thank you so much for coming. Yeah. And, um, yeah. Sorry, we couldn't get to audience questions, but there is going to be a, uh, a happy hour at the Hotel Intercontinental oh. uh, that that uh, right after this, and a lot of a uh, lot of the group are going to be there. So come come and mingle and step out of the way so you can see. Thank season you guys two for coming. Dusted on. Thank you. Bye.